What's up, Rust Stations? Welcome back to Let's Get Rusty, the number one resource for all things Rust. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel for weekly Rust videos. And most importantly, get your free, yes, I said free, Rust cheat sheet by heading over to letsgetrusty.com forward slash cheat sheet. In the last video, we talked about macros and specifically declarative macros in Rust. If you haven't seen that video already, make sure to check it out. Today, we're finishing off the advanced Rust series by talking about procedural macros. So with that said, let's get rusty. Procedural macros are like functions. They take code as input, operate on that code, and produce code as output. This is in contrast with declarative macros, which match against patterns and replace code with other code. There are three kinds of procedural macros, custom derived, attribute-like, and function-like, and they all work in a similar fashion. For complex technical reasons, which the Rust team hopes to eliminate in the future, procedural macros must be defined in their own crate with a custom crate type. The three kinds of procedural macros are all defined using a similar syntax, which you can see here. First, we bring the proc macro crate into scope, which defines token stream. Then we define our procedural macro by defining a function, where the name of the function is the name of our procedural macro, and the input is gonna be a token stream, which is the code we're operating on, and the output is also gonna be a token stream, which is the code we're producing. Tokens are the smallest individual elements of a program. They can represent keywords, identifiers, operators, separators, or literals. Our function must also have an attribute which specifies the kind of procedural macro we're creating. With that background, let's create our own custom derived macro. Our custom derived macro is gonna be called hello macro, and it will implement a trait conveniently also called hello macro, which will have an associated function with a default implementation that prints out hello macro. Here's an example of some code using our macro. First, we need to bring our macro into scope and we'll discuss why we need to bring two crates into scope in just a second. And then we can define a struct, in this case it's called pancakes, and have a derived attribute specifying our macro. What this will do is implement our hello macro trait for the pancake struct, which means now we can call hello macro from the pancake struct. All right, now let's actually implement hello macro. The first thing we need to do is create a new library crate called hello macro. So let's open up a terminal and type in cargo new hello macro dash dash lib. Then I'll cd into the newly created directory and open it up in VS Code. Here I've opened up lib.rs. Let's delete the code that's automatically generated and define our trait. Our macro has one associated function named hello macro. Now I've said previously that we wanted this associated function to have a default implementation. And we could do that if we wanted to simply print hello macro, but imagine if we wanted to do something a little more complicated. Imagine that we wanted to print hello macro followed by the type on which the trait was implemented on. Rust doesn't have reflective capabilities, so we can't look up the name of the type at runtime. The solution here is to use our macro to generate the default implementation. All right, now that we have our trait defined, we need to define our procedural macro. And if you recall from the beginning of the video, at this time, procedural macros have to be defined in their own crate. So let's open up our terminal again, and we're gonna create a new library crate inside of our hello macro crate. We'll go ahead and type in cargo new hello underscore macro underscore derive and then dash dash lib. There's a naming convention when structuring crates and macro crates. If you have a custom derived macro, then you'll name the crate whatever your crate's name was. So in this case, hello macro and append underscore derive. Because these two crates are tightly coupled, we created our macro crate inside of our library crate. Each crate still has to be published separately and code using our crates has to bring each crate into scope, which is why we saw those two use statements in our example earlier. Next, let's open up the cargo.toml file of our newly created crate.
Now remember I said macro crates are a special type of crate. So to signify that, we're gonna type in proc dash macro equals true. We'll also need to add the sin and quote crates as dependencies, and we'll see why in just a second. Also, I made a mistake here. This proc macro attribute must be under the lib section. All right, now let's open up the lib.rs file inside our hello macro derived crate. And we're going to replace the automatically generated code with an implementation of our macro. All right, let's go through this together. First, we have this statement, extern crate proc macro. Proc macro is a crate that comes with Rust, so we didn't have to declare it in our dependencies section inside of cargo.toml. However, to import the crate, we do have to write this extern crate statement. The proc macro crate allows us to read and manipulate Rust code. Next, we have three use statements. We bring token stream into scope, quote into scope, and sin into scope. The sin crate, short for syntax, allows us to take a string of Rust code and turn it into a syntax tree data structure, which we could operate on. And finally, the quote crate can take this syntax tree data structure and turn it back into Rust code. Next, we define our custom derived macro. Notice that our code is split into two operations. The hello macro derived function is responsible for parsing the token stream into a syntax tree and the impl hello macro function is responsible for transforming that syntax tree. This separation of concerns makes the code easier to understand and it reduces duplication because this parsing part is going to be the same for almost all procedural macros while the part that actually manipulates the syntax tree is going to be different. Our function is annotated with proc macro derive indicating that this is a custom derived macro with the name hello macro. Inside our function body, we use the sin crate to parse our input, which is a token stream into an abstract syntax tree. Here we're calling unwrap, which means our function will panic if parsing fails. This is appropriate because we're not returning a result type. And also this function is only gonna be called at compile time, not runtime. Then we pass the syntax tree into impl hello macro. So let's go ahead and implement that function. Inside our function body, we extract out the name of the type we're working on into a variable called name, and then we use the quote macro to output some Rust code. In this case, we want to implement the hello macro trait on our type. The quote macro has templating abilities, so this pound name here will be replaced with the actual name of our type. Then we want to provide a custom implementation for the hello macro associated function, which in this case is going to print hello macro my name is, and then the name of the type we're working on. The stringify macro here will take an expression and turn it into a string without evaluating the expression like the format macro would. The last thing to do here is take the output of the quote macro, which we saved in a variable called gen, and turn it into a token stream by calling the into method. At this point, both our hello macro crate and our hello macro derived crate should be complete. So let's go ahead and run cargo build to make sure. We were able to successfully build the hello macro derived crate. So now let's CD out into the hello macro crate and run cargo build again. And that was successful as well. Now let's actually test our macro out. I'm going to switch back to the example project from before. Next, I'm gonna open up the cargo.toml file and add our two crates as dependencies. In this case, I don't wanna publish the crates to crates.io, so I'm gonna specify a local relative path. Then if I switch back over to main.rs, you can see that the red squigglies went away, so our code should be able to compile. Let's go ahead and open up the terminal and type cargo run. As expected, the following string was printed. Hello macro, my name is Pancakes. Next, we're briefly gonna go over attribute-like macros and function-like macros. Attribute-like macros are similar to custom derived macros, except instead of generating code for the derived attribute, we can create a custom attribute. Also, custom derived macros only work on structs and enums, whereas attribute-like macros work on other types such as functions. Let's look at the following example. Imagine you're building a web framework and you wanna create a new attribute called route, which takes in an HTTP method and a route. This macro will generate code which will map a specific HTTP request to a given function. In this case, we're mapping a get request on the root path 
to the index function. We would define our attribute like macro by specifying a function annotated with proc macro attribute and our function would take in two arguments. The first argument is gonna contain the contents of the attribute. So in this case, it's gonna be the HTTP method and the path. The second argument is gonna contain the contents of the item the attribute is attached to. In this case, our index function. Other than that, attribute like macros work just like custom derived macros. Lastly, let's look at function like macros. Function like macros look like function calls, however, they are more flexible. Firstly, they could take a variable number of arguments, and secondly, they operate on Rust code. In this example, we wanna generate a function like macro called SQL, which will take a SQL statement as an argument, validate that that SQL statement has the correct syntax, and then generate code that will allow you to execute that SQL statement. As you can see, the definition for our function like macro is extremely similar to our custom derived macro, with the only difference being that we're annotating our function with proc macro instead of proc macro derive. All right, that's it for this video on procedural macros in Rust. If you have any questions or if you wanna see me do more videos about macros, leave a comment down below. Also, make sure to subscribe for weekly Rust videos and most importantly, get your free Rust cheat sheet by heading over to letsgetrusty.com forward slash cheat sheet. And with all that said, I'll see you in the next one.